Never before and never again will there be such a team. 11 Hall of Famers, the most magnificent assemblage of athletic talent ever gathered together on one roster in any sport at any time. Its mission, to reclaim for the U.S. the Men's Olympic Basketball Championship. I'm sitting here saying, I'm playing with the greatest basketball players in the world. I still can't believe that we're all together on one team. For more than half a century, the U.S. was so dominant in basketball that its collegiate players were all that was needed to win the gold. But by the 1988 Olympics, the de facto pros from the rest of the world were catching up. After the U.S. won only the bronze medal at the Olympics in Seoul, the college kids were jettisoned. The new approach was made official in September 1991, when it was announced that the following summer in Barcelona, the U.S. would be fielding a team of basketball icons, a dream team. I missed my chance in 1980. I was hurt by the, the fact that I didn't get a chance to compete for a gold medal, so I'm looking forward to it. And I'm kind of disappointed that the teams from the United States have lost the last couple of years. And it's frustrating, especially the way those other teams be running and jumping around like they've done something special. It kind of really makes me mad. Initially, the plan was still to include several college players, but when it became clear that the NBA's elite were willing to forego their summer vacations, that changed. Eventually, the selection committee would name only one collegian, Duke's Christian Leitner. The other 11 players would be pros, the best of the best. But when the team was introduced in a made-for-television event, there was one glaring omission. Isaiah Thomas and my relationship is nothing has to do with me being on this team. You know, uh, you know, I think a lot of things being blown out of proportion. That was a lie, one Michael Jordan copped to only recently in a book being released this summer by Jack McCallum of Sports Illustrated. When Jordan was approached to join the Dream Team in 1991, he told coach Chuck Daly and the selection committee, yes, count me in, on one condition. He told Chuck, he told the committee he really didn't want to play with Isaiah. And Chuck knew that Michael was much more important than Isaiah was. And so the committee kind of was left with no choice. I mean, if it was Michael Jordan or Isaiah Thomas, that was no contest. Michael Jordan was going to win that contest. Did Isaiah deserve to be on the dream team? No question about it. When you think about a team, everybody must get along. Everybody has got to live together. They got to hang out together. And Isaiah, in some of his competitive nature rub, you know, some of the guys the wrong way, whether it's Michael Jordan, Carl Malone. When the Dream Team assembled for the first time in San Diego in June 1992 in preparation for the Olympic qualifying tournament, this is how it looked. At center, Patrick Ewing and David Robinson. At forward, Carl Malone, Charles Barkley, Larry Bird, Scottie Pippen, and Leitner. At guard, Chris Mullen, John Stockton, Magic Johnson, Clyde Drexler, and Jordan. Bird and Johnson, the team's unofficial captains, were both at the ends of their careers. Bird was hobbled by constant back pain. Johnson had announced the previous fall that he was HIV positive. His enthusiasm, though, hadn't waned. The anticipation was wearing me out, you know, because I was so excited. And now I'm finally here, and I can relax now and, and do what I know how to do and what I do best, and that's just play basketball. How do you feel, Larry? Good, thank you. Uh, you'll be okay. I mean, I better be. Everything. I better be. Hey, we should have ego. We're the best players in the world. But you, you, I don't know what you do for a living. You probably got an ego. So everybody got an ego. It was merely a scrimmage, but the dream team did lose to a team of college all stars, powered by Michigan's Chris Webber and Duke's Bobby Hurley. For Chuck Daly's purposes, it was the best of all possible outcomes. He basically wanted to send a message that you could lose. And so in a short scrimmage, he pretty much orchestrated a loss. We were making a comeback. He got up call practice. And we were like, no, oh, coach, you know, let's play another one. Nope, we'll play it tomorrow. And that right there stuck in our crawl all night. It gave us a sense of urgency and showed us that we just couldn't show up and have a collection of NBA All-Stars and think we were just gonna win based on that. 
Later that month, at the Olympic qualifying tournament, opponents such as Panama would be sacrificed on the Dream Team's altar. Panama, oh, we're going to get the canal back. You know. <laughs> All but effortlessly, the U.S. qualified for Barcelona and gave the world a taste of what was to come, winning by an average of almost 52 points per game. In July, the Dream Team touched down in Barcelona. In the 2,800-year history of the Olympics, which were created to honor Zeus, never before had any group of athletes been treated so much like gods themselves. After every guy got off the bus, just, ah, ah. The only way you could have, you know, I described the attention they described was uh, orgasmic. I just remember turning to my wife and looking at her and said, is this for us? You see fire trucks, police, guys standing with Uzis and everything. I'm like, what is going on? I can't quite say I was a rock star those two weeks, but I was part of a band. That show was incredible. I don't know anything about Angola, but Angola's in trouble. In their opening game, the Dream Teamers thrashed the Angolans who were clearly more interested in collecting autographs than in competing against their heroes. Regardless, Charles Barkley sparked a minor international incident by throwing an elbow at forward Herlander Coimbra. We all cringed because we didn't, we, don't, we didn't need to do that, we didn't have to do that. Coimbra, however, was treated much gentler than Tony Kukoc, the Croatian star who'd been drafted by the Chicago Bulls but had not yet played for them. Furious that the Bulls wouldn't reward Scottie Pippen with a new contract because they were keeping money in reserve to sign Kukoc, the two Bulls on the Dream Team decided to inflict the maximum amount of humiliation allowable under the rules. That morning of the bus ride to go to shoot around, Michael said, look, I got him. I don't want no help. I'm going to shut him down. And Pippen said, no, no, you got to give me some of them, too. Jordan and Pippen made Kukoc suffer for the Bulls' faith in him. He scored just four points and was completely shaken. I just say this. I felt sorry for Tony Kukoc. Man, they, they played him so hard and made it so hard for him that night. I wasn't quite sure he was going to come over to the NBA. Scotty says he doesn't think he can play in the NBA. <laughs> Yeah, that's a little bit unfair, Josh, to him. I mean, you, know, you got to realize, the guy was playing against 11 of the best players in the league. After Angola and Croatia, the Dream Teamers would go on to demolish Germany, Brazil, and Spain, then Puerto Rico, and Lithuania, winning by an average of 45 points per game. In the gold medal game, the result was only slightly closer. In a rematch with Croatia, the Americans won by 32 points. 117 to 85. I remember being up there with all those great players and then just being able to, to soak it in and, and listen to that national anthem. When they started playing our national anthem, man, that's when we, I think a few of us got choked up. I was standing up there saying, this is who we are, and this is what we're about, and I was just proud to be an American. Everybody made the sacrifices that they needed to make to, to get that win, to get this, to get this. <laughs> I'm showing it off today. This is what it's all about, a gold medal for the USA. That was our goal. Now our mission is accomplished. Now we can relax. Somewhat anticlimactically, the dream had been fashioned into reality. But the point was never to make things interesting on the court just to crush all those other countries who dared to challenge American basketball supremacy. There have been five subsequent so-called dream teams at the Olympics, but none match the talent or the significance of the original. Probably none ever will. People can say dream team two or whatever they want, but there'll never be a team like, like that one. <laughs> all those other teams, I'm sorry, just couldn't follow the dream team. They didn't put on a show like the dream team. They, they were not loved like the dream team. They didn't have the personalities like the dream team. It's only one dream team, baby. One. That was us.